It's an extremely rainy morning and I'm very happy to be inside. I just want to see what it looks like inside. Hi guys, oh, welcome to another reading vlog. If you're new here, my name is Leo Nee. Welcome to this chill place on the internet where we babble about books. It's Friday today and I wanted to make a very cozy, fall-themed vlog for you guys where we also read a bunch. I'm about to leave to a pumpkin patch. So I'm gonna try to get ingredients for pumpkin soup because I really want to make a pumpkin soup. I don't know about you, but cooking for me is one of those, one of those activities that just fills me with satisfaction, like creative satisfaction, without ever making me feel like I can fail. Even though my recipes do fail, sometimes, quite often maybe, I just don't care and that's really nice. <laughs> the books that I'm excited to sink my teeth into this weekend are some low-key books that I don't feel the need to finish, you know, some books that I just want to sit with and just see how far I go. I want to read some more John Keats poems. I have his entire collection of complete poems. I've talked about this like to no end, uh, but I just want to read some more poems of his. I'm not very familiar with poems, so maybe this is my time. I'm in my poetry era. Uh, and then I also want to Take, take a gander, take a peek, take, give my little try to Plato's Symposium. Um, I've tried starting this a while ago, but I didn't really get through it because I wasn't in the right mindset. But right now I am, okay? We're doing self-studying in my self-study era. Okay, I need to stop saying in my <laughs> era because I say that way too much. Okay, bye, let's go. Paprika. Nee, nee, kijk, wacht. Lijkt het me op zo'n um, zo zeediertje. Oh ja. Dat is raar. Cool. Oh, ze zijn niet eetbaar. Dus als je wilt decoreren. Toch? Dat is een grote nee, jongen. Dat is voor de soep. Staat er? Ja, dan moet ik gewoon de soep. Misschien. Ja, er staat een groene eetbaar soep over. Deze zijn ook eetbaar. Soep. Er is wel om te eten. Oh, wat raar. En dit zijn alle Halloween. Deze heeft net pet. Oh. En kijk, deze is geschilderd. Ja. Yeah. Dat is cute. Pumpkin hole. Oh, oh my yes, it's very heavy. Luckily there were these little chalkboard slates that had information about the pumpkins on them. So whether they were edible or not, or great for carving, like if they were good for soups or better for like cakes and stuff. Um, this is my main event. This heavy, heavy little man. Um, it's green, but apparently on the inside it's supposed to be orange. And this one is great for soup. So this is what I was looking for. A big old pumpkin uh, that you wouldn't find at a supermarket very easily. Uh, you can make it to soup. Oh my gosh, does my, <gasps> my nail polish. It matches my nail polish. This was truly meant to be. Of course, I could not just leave with one pumpkin. Unfortunately, I was persuaded into buying more. <laughs> this one, apparently this one is paintable. I'm going to paint this, but let's all be honest, it's probably just gonna kind of stand there, just lay around in my room for a bit. And I will probably never get to painting it, but hey, a girl can dream. It's also pretty. 
so it serves as decoration. And then the last one in a plastic bag because I dropped it and I kind of smashed it. See? Crack. Melon ASMR. <laughs> when I was there, you could really tell that pumpkins are like family of melons. Like I think pumpkins and melons and I think also courgettes are in the same vegetable family. And you could really tell looking at all those other different pumpkin types, uh, including this one. I mean, if you look at this, it looks like a melon, but it's a pumpkin. And this one was apparently great to make jam out of. So naturally I, a person who never eats jam, was like, yeah, let me make pumpkin jam. But yeah, it's still Friday, so I still have to, you know, just do work for the rest of the day. But then tomorrow it's weekend and we're gonna have fun and make pumpkin soup. I feel like I look very rough right now. I'm trying to go outside without makeup a little bit more often because I'm I'm very reliant on makeup. I've noticed like I don't like just now, you know, if I don't wear makeup, I look at myself and I'm like, oh, I look a little rough, but that's just because I'm not used to the fact that this is just my face. <laughs> I just popped by the grocery store to get ingredients that I need to turn this baby into a pumpkin soup. I have a lot of onions, then I have a ton of ginger, then for extra flavor, some chives, classic, and then some limes. It's only three in the afternoon, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna read. Yesterday I showed you these two options and I'm kind of in a mood to just get lost in a little bit of poetry. See if I can understand some of this.
I always have a really hard time getting into poetry. This one is no different, uh, probably mostly because it's rather old-fashioned English. I uh, decided that I wanted to make random little doodles. I don't know, I just sat there and I was like, I'm just gonna read this and make random little doodles in the margins. I used to draw a lot, but then when I went to university, I kind of stopped drawing, mostly because most of my drawing happened in the margins of my notebooks at secondary school, but then at university, I couldn't really, <laughs> I couldn't really permit not paying attention and making notes in the margins. And this kind of has the same feel. The great thing about making random little doodles in the margins is that there's not really any pressure for it to be pretty. There's a difference between an illustration, a full-on illustration, and just a little doodle. And drawing in the margins of my book just feels like a little doodle. <laughs> not only does that lower the bar for me to draw so I don't get overwhelmed with this idea of like, oh, does this look nice? Like it's not finished, it has to be pretty. It also somehow makes the poetry a little less intimidating because I'm just like, well, I'm just reading this poem and I'm just drawing a doodle of whatever, whatever this poem is making me think of. Like, oh, he's mentioning an apple. Let me draw a, a tiny little apple here. <laughs> He's talking about the barred clouds that bloom the soft dying day. As I read, let me draw these tiny little clouds. I do like them, they're very easy to read in the sense that they follow a very clear meter and, and rhyme. Um, but he's so dramatic. Oh my gosh, I don't know if you've ever read John Keats's letters. Unfortunately, they're not in this anthology of his poems. I thought that they would be, but my boyfriend has a version of Keats that does include the letters and we read them one day and they are hilarious because they're so dramatic. It's probably a sign of the times, but it's lovely. It's just my, dude, the joy, the love that this man has for his friends. Oh, you'd think, you'd think they are like star-crossed lovers. It's so over the top and dramatic, very beautiful. And you can see that also in his poem. He's talking about, oh, the sweetness of the pain. Let me slake all my thirst for sweet heartache. So I drew a little dramatic, dramatic little John Keats. He's a melodramatic king. Very relaxing. I should really do this more often. Just read a little poem and draw some doodles. But now, oh, I've already put this off for way too long because it's already six. I'm going to murder that pumpkin. I really have no idea how I'm even going to be able to cut this. I just want to see what it looks like inside. So yeah, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna take you with me to my very ugly and not aesthetic student housing kitchen. <laughs> This is not just a melon. <laughs> it smells like melon. Oh my god!
Good morning. I'm having a super chill, slow Sunday morning. I picked up, started reading a little bit in Symposium. I only got like a little bit into the introduction because I actually have to leave in a bit. Introductions are always nice for books like this because they just give you some, you know, context, some theory around the stuff that you're about to read. I do recognize some of the things that I learned from some of the philosophy classes that I've taken at university. Sometimes you just learn these things that once you've learned them, they make a lot of sense. You're like, yeah, duh. But before you learn them, you're like, oh wait, I never actually really thought about that. The fact that of course all science comes from philosophy and for years and years and years, science was just done without experiments like no experiments were being done it was just theorizing oftentimes they kind of just like happened to work for completely different reasons than they thought for years most of medicine was based on the theory of these four fluids in your body which we now know make it is completely wrong but somehow it did work <laughs> it did help them to cure people just not for the reason that they thought it worked if you have an idea you have to figure out if it's true or not by doing an experiment and it's so interesting to see that that just hasn't always been the case that like science was just without experiments until one day someone was like hey let me let me just do an experiment and try out this theory that i have and it just changed science forever and i just i like seeing those little tiny things that seem so normal to us now uh, and realize that at some point someone had to come up with that <laughs> and it hasn't always been so normal as it is right now but yeah i'm not continuing reading right now because i'm actually going to utrecht which is a city in the netherlands with do my housemate who you all know i need to get ready uh, to go into town because I just like to wake up and just throw on a big sweater and sweatpants and not have to worry about what I'm going to wear and potentially uncomfortable clothing. Hello, welcome to the corner of my room with my wardrobe. Um, oh, by the way, here I, I've been drying the pumpkin seeds. Somehow they're weirdly sticky, like I really tried my best to get all the pulp off of it they have a weird sticky film around them so I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to toast them to make them edible um, but I left them out to dry here <laughs> there we go my clothes what do I want to wear it's weird weather I don't know how to dress for transition weather you know I just want to put on all of my all of my jumpers are back here all of my jumpers but I can't really wear them yet because they're kind of too hot but I also cannot wear t-shirts because that's definitely too cold and I don't have a lot of things that work in between you know like here inside I can wear all my big sweaters because it gets very cold in my completely unisolated student old house room but the moment I go outside and wear a coat or go inside in a place that you know is an actual working building <laughs> Jumpers like this become a little too cold. This is a recent addition to my wardrobe from a vintage store, a corduroy button-up, and it's my favorite thing in the world, and I have to 100% resist the urge to just wear this all the time. I have something similar in white. This one is new. It's white because I thought, oh, I need like a cream colored button up because that's a staple and a basic. But every time I wear it, I feel like it just washes me out. Like it works if I'm going for a black and white look, but that's not what I want. I want something autumnal, something that says I'm going into the city with my friend. Can I still wear this? Nah. No. <laughs> Why is it so difficult? I did not spend years meticulously creating like a perfectly color coordinated wardrobe to look at it and think I have nothing to wear. Ready? It's very simple, but it always works to just wear an all black outfit with a nice blazer.
I have bought two things. I bought two things that I am just so happy with. <laughs> so happy. Okay, let me first show you the, the sensible purchase that I made. I have finally gotten myself my first pair of real Doc Martens boots. Here's the thing, I have been wearing a knockoff Doc Martens for years now and I've had to replace them like every two years because they wear out so quickly. Uh, so I thought maybe it's finally time to splurge on some real ones and I've wanted to buy real ones sooner but the normal like regular Doc Martens just don't fit me <laughs> like they're just too broad but these are the Pascal Virginia ones so the ones that already have kind of soft broken leather and these do fit me I definitely still have to break them in a little bit because they're you know the leather is still a little bit harsh in certain points around my feet but I'm so happy and I hope that I can be wearing these for years and years and years and years and years. And I don't have to buy new ones every two years because my current shoes are at the end of their lives. Like at the very end of their lives. Like they were falling apart. And then the other thing is the less sensible purchase. <laughs> Usually I am very hesitant when it comes to buying things that do not have an immediate practical use. Normally I only want to get new stuff if I genuinely need that new thing right now, but when I saw this in the store it just spoke to me on a very deep level. <laughs> Look at him! Hello, welcome my new addition to my room! Hello! If you guys have any fun ideas for a name, let me know! It's an extremely rainy morning and I'm very happy to be inside. So I'll definitely keep both of these books in mind for all of my upcoming free days. Um, especially Plato, I really I did not get very far into this one, but I really do want to uh, get further into it and learn a little bit more. The pumpkin soup is also a hit. I love it, it tastes amazing. I feel like a little bit of a child sitting here with this thing in my hands, but it's just very calming, okay? I'm just gonna put him here. There we go. The great thing about fall to me so far is that it just allows me to sit inside all day without feeling this urge, this pressure to go outside and experience the outside world and experience the sun and make the most of the long days. Now it's like, no, you can just sit inside and it doesn't matter. And that's why I call it hermit weather because it, you know, makes all of us hermits feel normal about our lifestyles. I'm trying to get myself to just be a little bit more chill because one thing I've realized is that if you have free time it just fills itself up with things that you still need to do and sometimes you just need to force yourself to have free time for yourself and I think I did that this weekend and I enjoyed it. Highly recommend. Thank you for spending your time with me. I had a lovely weekend. I hope this video gave you a little bit of calm, a little bit of a cozy autumn vibe as well. You can subscribe if you enjoyed this and you want to chill out with me more often with the other videos that I make. And I think that's all I have to say for today. And I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you soon next week. Goodbye.